Hi, this is Sebastian. You might know my mom, Heather, from Shine.fm. This is the Shine.fm MomCast. Take it away, Mom. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Shine.fm MomCast today. I'm your host, Heather, and today I am joined by Tracy uh, Willard. And Tracy, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? Well, hello. Uh, Thanks so much for having me, Heather. I live in Port Huron, Michigan. Oh, well, right next to Port Huron, Michigan, in Clyde. (laughs) And we have been very blessed. We have a ministry called Hunter Hospitality House, and that provides two houses near both hospitals in Port Huron to uh, give people free lodging so they can stay there if they have a hospitalized loved one or treatment of their own. And it was really birthed out of... uh, the loss of our child, Hunter. So let's talk about that a little bit. How many kids do you have? Yeah, I have three children. Uh, they're all grown and married. There's Garrett and Cullen and Parker, and uh, two of them live here local in our area, and another lives in Phoenix, Arizona, and he and his wife have a little boy, too. So I am a grandma. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Well, yeah. Let's, let's talk yeah. about Hunter a little bit, and where is Hunter in the line of your children, Tracy? He was our second child. My first child was 17 months old when Hunter was born. Hunter was born prematurely. My water broke at eight weeks. Oh, wow. And so I was back. Yeah, I'm not eight weeks. I'm sorry, eight weeks early. Oh, okay. And so I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so eight weeks early. And I was hospitalized for a week while they uh, decided what to do about that. I was given some medicine that should um, strengthen his lungs because he was obviously going to be born early. Mm -hmm. Um, They determined at that point that I had uh, an infection and he was going to need to be induced. So he was born seven weeks early and he was kept in the hospital longer than I was and then he was brought home and then he was put back in the hospital and uh, then he was brought home again and then he passed away at home with me uh, one night while I was nursing. I fell asleep and woke up and he was gone. So tell me about the aftermath of that, Tracy, because I think that your your story of how um, you survived, I mean, because really, as a mom, to sur- you, you survived it. Um, you're still here. <laughs> um, God has a plan for you and your life. And um, talk to us about how, how, you, how you handled that, how you survived that, Tracy. Well, I'm not going to lie. It was so traumatic. Yeah. It was, it was a pain that you just don't get over that kind of pain and i and it happened 2 days before christmas and i already had a baby at home and so it really was just a blur at first that's my my best description uh, i i was exhausted and emotional and i don't remember a whole lot of mm-hmm. the first few weeks after it happened but then the world starts to become clear. And, uh, you know, I have a couple of really clear memories I'd like to share with you. Yeah, sure. Uh, Because I just feel like there are times that the Lord spoke to me, even when I didn't think that he could have been in this. And he just made it crystal clear that the same Lord that had been with me before this happened is the same Lord that's with me now. Right in the emergency room, my my brain was filled with music, which seems bizarre at the time, but I couldn't stop thinking about two songs, and one was by the Gaithers. It was called We Have This Moment Today. The other uh, was called Trust His Heart. And those two songs about trusting and understanding that God is the designer mm. really just set my path. Mm. And as I came out of the fog of it all, some scriptures that really helped me were about um, 
how he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And it was a promise. I knew that my heart was so broken, and I couldn't imagine that it was going to be healed. But I believe that he is the Lord of promises, and and he promised me that in his word. I just, my trust in him has grown from and through this experience. And then Isaiah, he says that gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Mm. I just prayed that on, on days that I just didn't feel like I could stop crying. And there were days that I, that I just, there were years that I tried not to cry because I was afraid that I would start and never stop. Mm to be the best mom that I could for Garrett. And then we went one year later, and uh, Parker, our next son, was born a couple years after that. I kept myself busy as their mom and um, and really needed the Lord's guidance. Mm-hmm. And then just, just the, the way that Hunter had passed away there while I was nursing him caused an awful lot of guilt. Mm-hmm. And fear of, um, you know, what if I'm prosecuted for this? Mm. You know, this accidental death that I couldn't have imagined would happen just by feeding my baby. Mm. Again, the Lord comforted me through that. And he knew how I felt even when I couldn't express it. Mm -hmm. And he he really helped me with that. Um, I remember this woman asking me if we had gotten the um, autopsy results back yet. And I was really reluctant to talk about it. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know how people would respond. Yeah, I don't blame you, yeah. <laughs> I did confess to her that yes, and his the cause of the death was accidental suffocation. And she just prayed with me, and and again, she told me that God was the same God that gave me that child, that gave me Garrett, that was with me in the good times, I didn't have to lose him in this. Mm -hmm. So that journey, that journey was heartbreaking and beautiful. I don't know how to say that (laughs) in another way. Right. But when you're, when you're brokenhearted, that's when God makes himself so real. Yeah. That's very, very true, Tracy, very true. Let me ask you this. Like, I know that um, there are going to be women who are going to listen to this who, well, there's, I think there's going to be two types of women. One, there's going to be women who have gone through a child loss, maybe not the same way that you did, but are going to go through, have gone through a child loss. And the, everything that you've said is so encouraging and it's so true. There's going to be another type of woman who's going to listen to this and they're going to say, I have a friend who, um, you know, is going through this or um, maybe I'm going to have someone in my life in the future that's going to go through this. What are some things that really, really, like you just said, someone stopped and even though they asked you questions about everything, they prayed with you. What were some things that people said that or did for you during that time that were super helpful and really encouraging? Good question. We were going to a church at that time that was pretty small, and most of the people that went to the church were about 10 to 15 years. So we looked to them as mentors, Mm -hmm. and uh, one one or two of them had lost a child themselves and would share that with me. So I would encourage people who have gone through the experience themselves available if that person wants to talk you know just keep telling that grieving mother that you're there whenever she needs you whenever she needs to talk to you and and practical ways to help the grieving would would definitely be you know the casserole the card the letting them know that they're still in your in your heart to prayers even if you can't understand what they're going through. I remember one time at church, a woman was behind me, and I lifted my hands to praise and then put them down really fast. Just just couldn't do it that day. And 
I remember she just kind of massaged my shoulders and, and lifted my arm up just a little bit. And then she told me later, she said, I know you want to praise God. And I know it's hard to do right now. Just mm-hmm. that acknowledgement of knowing what I was going through was everything. That's really cool. I appreciate you sharing that because I think there's times when those of us who have friends who are going through difficult seasons, first off, I would say probably what that lady did for you in church was Holy Spirit prompted, you know, that um, yeah. she did that. And, and that's the other thing I would say to people is I think there's this idea that um, and I've really gotten away from this, Tracy, as I've gone through some tough stuff um, in the past few years with my family. You can't say anything to make it better. Like, you can, no. like, there's nothing you can say to make it better. But for me, what I've found is that when I go through tough times, just having, like you said, the cards, people saying, hey, can I bring you a meal? But sometimes it's just someone just sitting with you or just mm-hmm. saying to you, like, hey, I know this is hard for you and I'm sorry, you know, and, and just being there with them in it because there really isn't anything we can do to make it really do to make it better or say other than to show up for them and to let them know they're not forgotten and that they're still loved and just listen to the prompting, you know, of the Holy Spirit. I love that story of, of she just knew that you, where your struggle was at. And obviously that was, you know, from the Holy Spirit. So that, that was, that's, I love hearing that story. And I just, you know, I'm very emotional about all of this. So thank you for sharing your story, because I think this is the emotional, most emotional I've ever gotten on a podcast. But I want to hear when you moved on and you, you guys uh, started, what, what was birthed out of um, this loss and tragedy was a hospitality house, um, which sounds, I think, interesting to me. And I really would love to hear the story about how God birthed that ministry for you and your husband. Sure. Through the years, as I was raising my children, I was a stay-at-home mom, and I did a lot of journaling. And, you know, that time period of when Hunter was alive and then directly after his passing, it was just marked with that exhaustion. And we lived right in town where our hospital had been, but when I would go and feed Hunter at the hospital when he was hospitalized and I had been released, I would do it every two to three hours, you know, as you need to do as a nursing mom, which means around the clock and in the night. Our memory of that time was really of the exhaustion. Mm. So we began to dream and I began to journal about an idea of if there were a house near the hospital where someone like me could stay so they didn't have to go home and they didn't have to drive. They could just walk right over there and sleep and eat after the hospital when they need to. So through the years, my husband and I reached out to the hospital and and to different people asking them about this idea. And there wasn't much of of a reception for it. And then I was at a meeting one day, uh, a local meeting for something, and a woman that I was sitting next to was telling me about how she had a family that was sleeping in the lobby of the hospital. Her family was there from out of town because of a hospitalized loved one, and they didn't want to leave to go to a hotel, so they were sleeping right in the lobby. So I told her about my idea, or our idea, and in our dream, what we'd always wanted to do in Hunter's memory. And she told me about a woman that was new to the hospital that she thought I should tell. So we reworked our email and sent it to this woman who right away got back to us and said, I'm going to set up a meeting with the hospital administrators. I love this idea. So it was just one of those things where it's in the Lord's timing. This, I, my children were much older then, mm-hmm. and uh, I had a job working for a nonprofit, so I was learning an awful lot about nonprofits, and the Lord just works in his time. And so this dream became a prayer. We met with these people and they were interested in the idea and 
did some interviewing of their nursing staff to see if there was an interest there, and there definitely was. So we set about establishing our nonprofit and began leasing a house from the hospital. Mm. And, and then on what would have been Hunter's 20th birthday, we opened that first house, Hunter Hospitality House. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, so cool. and then two years later, we opened the next one on his birthday, too. Mm. So tell me how you see, um, like, are there times when you look at what God has, has given you in this ministry and you think, like, what do you think about, like, when you think back to those times, like you said, it was a blur, like, are there ever times where you just look at what God's done and how do you respond to, because all of this came out a horrific tragedy, but you're providing something for people that are in a similar situation to you that you were when Hunter was in the hospital. But like, do you have moments where you're like, I see Hunter in this. I'm thankful for this. Like, where do you land now all these years later after going through everything you've gone through and, and God birthed this ministry? How does, how does Hunter show up for you? And how do you see God in the midst of all of this now? Well, it's, I'd love to have Hunter at our kitchen table. We have our family over on every Sunday night, and I would love to have hit, have had him grow up in my home. And I didn't get to experience the first day of kindergarten or him driving a car or getting married, all the other milestones that I've had with my other children. But like my other children, Hunter is God's child Mm. and God's design for his life was different than that ideal design. And now he passed away at 16 days of age Mm. and his little life has blessed thousands of people. So there have been 1,706 registrations at the house providing over 8,000 free nights of stay Mm. for our guests who who have one last thing to worry about. Right. And, you know, they might be be saying goodbye to a loved one themselves or facing a medical tragedy of their own. And and that little boy lives on through this. Mm So I... I am grateful to God for being his mom. It it was an honor when he was alive, and it continues to be an, an honor. Hmm. That is a great way to look at that, Tracy. What, what would you say to the mom who is going through a child loss right now that's really fresh and really recent? What would you say if you had an opportunity to sit and encourage her? What did you need to say or what did you need to hear during those, those times? I really wish someone had told me to go to Christian counseling mm. because there were things that I didn't process for 20 years Mm. until I really felt like I was going to break apart. And you don't even recognize what the origin of your pain is 20 years down the road. You know, you might just think I'm not getting along with people or I'm having this problem or I'm having this problem. And when you peel back the onion, it has so much to do with the loss of that child. Mm. So if I could have gotten myself into Christian counseling sooner, I think that would have been so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I definitely would say do that. Mm. I, I was also told during the funeral process, my husband and I were told by a woman who worked at the funeral home that many, many marriages break up because of a child loss. Mm. And the husband is going to grieve differently than the wife. It just is. I mean, we're all different people. And just knowing that that's normal and that your grief is going to be different than one another and that you both need to process your own grief and your own feelings separate from one another is really important to remember. Hmm. Uh, One last, I did go to a support group 
but it wasn't a Christian support group. Mm. And I was dismayed by people whose child had passed away decades ago who were still getting together in grief so long after that. And, and I had just, it was all very fresh to that and said, I can't, I can't keep coming. It doesn't give me any hope. Right. I, I wanted hope that the Lord was going to heal my broken heart. And so there are groups now around that are Christian and, and they have the hope of God. So definitely make sure that you're looking to God first. Hmm. That's really good. Give me a little window, if you're willing, to uh, share about how you and your husband did go through this. Like how, and, and I'll have to tell you that because we suffered a miscarriage early in our marriage, I heard that from people too. Because it was like once we had a miscarriage, then a lot of people, and it's not the same as as losing a child after birth. But we heard from a lot of people that you know you're going to grieve differently than your husband, and I expected that. Although that didn't necessarily make that any easier, <laughs> if you know what I right. mean. Like I yeah. uh, wanted certain things from him, and he wasn't able to give those things to me because he was processing very differently than I was, um, and so it was during that time for me trying to be like hey why aren't you because I for me in, in mind I was going through it physically during the miscarriage he wasn't but he dealt with it very differently how did you guys like you know if you can share a little window and in, in how did that kind of play out for you guys knowing what you could face and what you were going to face now that you had lost Hunter well we definitely were aware that his way of dealing with grief is um, he's a, a task-oriented person, mm-hmm. so he took care of all the details that needed to be done, and I'm the emotional person, and I, of course, was dealing with all of the emotions and just loving on that little boy that I had, our, our older son, mm-hmm. while Jeff was forging through with all of the details. And as I look back at it now, I'm really grateful for that and for that personality that he had to do that. Mm -hmm. But boy, oh boy, then I really felt like, can't you just sit on the couch and cry with me? Right, right. (laughs) That that he grieves differently than I do. And again, I would talk to people and say, don't miss out on counseling Mm -hmm. because marriage counseling can benefit, but Individually, the two of you going to a counselor and working through your own emotions Mm -hmm. are really good. Um, It's really good to do that because I didn't want him to work through his emotions because he was just trying to please me. Mm. His his emotions were really his own. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I would say is that there's still pain today. Mm. There's still emotions today. Sometimes people who stay with us might share a picture. They might have a premature baby of their own, and they might share a picture with us, and we're right back where we were that day. Hmm. And so we, we've learned to support each other in the grief that still happens hmm. and to not accept that we need to be over this. Right, right. Do you ever struggle, like, um, I've heard women say that, like, when they've lost a child, they specifically struggle, like, during that month that you lost that child or when that child, you know, like, if it was a miscarriage, that do you do you tend to every year either, how do you commemorate his birthday? I know, obviously, you opened up, <laughs> you know, Hunter Hospital <laughs> Houses, but for you personally, like, do you struggle during that time or how do you, how do you get through that time of year every year? I did for many years. He was born on December 7th, and he passed away on December 23rd. Mm. Christmas is right there. Yeah. Whereas other people who are dealing with their grief on another day might be able to just take the day off or go for a drive. I We've got Christmas preparations that have to be done. And, um, and I had other children. Of course, I wanted them to enjoy their life and not be missing out because that was a particularly hard month for me. Right. So, again, with the journaling, 
Mm. And and once once I was in counseling too, I would I would do a lot of the counseling exercises in my journal mm. during those really hard times. And that was that was really healing and and then of course not everybody's gonna open a hospitality house in memory of their child, but years down the road when you want to do something significant that's important to you and your family in honor of that baby's life, if you're able to to time that around their birthday, mm-hmm. really it changes. It changes a day mm-hmm. that was heartbreaking into a day of joy. Mm, exactly. I, I never want people to think that, oh, this is this incredible thing that the Willards did. It, it is an incredible thing that the Lord has done right. that we have been part of. Right, yeah. That's awesome. I, Chrissy, I really appreciate your transparency today. Um, like I said, there are multiple times during our conversation where I got emotional because this is um, heavy and big stuff, and I know that there are a lot of women out there who um, may be facing this or are going to face this, and your journey um, kind of to where you guys are now, uh, working through that as a family and also um, honoring Hunter's memory um, is going to be a great encouragement to so many people. So thank you for joining us on the MomCast today. Thank you.